You know, the Lakers are actively trying to get a trade done. They even put in an offer for Boyan Bogdanovich, which the Detroit Pistons at this time have denied. They want an unprotected first uh, based on what reports have said, but the Lakers only want to give a protected first. Now, Sadiq Bey, based on reports that we got today, uh, and I'll even link that video down in the description below, but based on reports that we got today, Boyan Bogdanovich, uh, the Detroit Pistons don't really want to move. They look at him as uh, a future piece in, in hopes that they can kind of turn things around next season. That's why they signed him to an extension, as well as uh, him being sort of a mentor and a leader and veteran presence for such a young team. Uh, but Sadiq Bey is very gettable as uh, the word that was used, that the Lakers could actually get Sadiq Bey because Sadiq Bey is kind of the odd man out on the Detroit Pistons, uh, that they want to go with more size rather than, you know, having him play the, the power forward spot, which he was most effective for them. Uh, so maybe you could go get Sadiq Bey. Now, I've even said, like, if you're going to do an unprotected first, you got to get Sadiq Bey in the deal, even if you got to throw in a second. So say, you know, Boyan Bogdanovich and Sadiq Bey for Beverly and Nunn, and you throw in an unprotected first and a second, I think that would be enough because Sadiq Bey is good enough and young enough to where, you know, he'd be a piece for now and the future. Gives you some wing depth, a guy that can play both forward spots. So could Boyan Bogdanovich. Just takes a lot of pressure off, and they can't be worse than, than Patrick Beverly and Kendrick Nunn, right? Especially Boyan. Boyan would be just a perfect complimentary fit. Uh, you know, Sadiq Bey isn't like a lockdown defender, but he's got the size and the intangibles to be a really good defender. Not just that Darvin Ham. Uh, look at what he's been able to do with like Russell Westbrook and stuff. Imagine if you gave him a guy with size like Sadiq Bey. Uh, it could be very well uh, for his future and just the defensive landscape of the Lakers. And then Boyan just provides that scoring punch. Now, obviously, there's also the Knicks deal, right? Cam Reddish is a desirable piece that the Lakers really uh, could use and really could want going forward. He was a piece that was traded to the Lakers last season until the Knicks decided to, to ruin the deal at like the final second. Uh, and uh, Lakers are even maybe interested in taking on Evan Fournier. Uh, the Knicks want to unload Evan Fournier. He's completely fallen out of the rotation. He's having a bit of a rough year, but he is historically a 38% uh, three-point shooter for his career. Not a great defender, but a serviceable one. Uh, he's had better years uh, in the past so maybe a, a change of scenery being on a team having a guy like LeBron and AD to kind of take a lot of the pressure off maybe he could kind of get back to that if he could get back to just being serviceable defensively and being you know 38 percent or even if he just gets to 36 37 percent like that could be a healthy dose of shooting that the Lakers could really use uh, Cam Reddish is a sizable uh, wing that could play both forward spots, guard multiple positions. He's shown a lot of promise. He's also only 22 years old, so there would be a huge benefit in him as well. And so you, you can see the Lakers kind of want like a veteran guy with a young guy, right? A, a piece for now and the future, uh, especially if you're giving up those first round picks. You're going to need young guys that can be on the team beyond when you would convey those picks. Uh, so that way you have something of a building block in case, you know, Things you have to do a rebuild or something, or you can't get another star at some point to come to Lakers or whatever. Although, you know, historically speaking, the Lakers have always been able to do that. So maybe they won't have that problem there. But still, even if you did, even if you did go get two stars, right? Well, great. You, now you have Cam Reddish. Maybe you get the Sadiq Bay, things like that. Uh, but personally, not really big on the Fournier because his contract is is multiple years. I don't believe his contract expires till 2025, um, which you're taking on a lot of long-term money. Um, now, this would be much cheaper, much, much cheaper. Uh, you'd get, uh, you'd probably get both of these guys for a second at the most uh, because you're taking on Fournier's contract. You're getting Cam Reddish. They're likely going to lose Cam Reddish regardless. So whatever they could recoup, they get free salary relief and they get like a second round pick. Like that's pretty good value uh, for these two guys. And then for the Lakers, they get two pieces that can hopefully help. And I mean, look, these two guys can't be worse than Patrick Beverly and Kendrick Nunn, right? I mean, so anything at this point would be better than nothing as far as that deal goes. But is it worth, you know, losing that cap flexibility that you have going into next year although there isn't like a ton of options out there but you know it, it would be you know you might be able to get somebody that is better than cam reddish and Fournier. now obviously if you could just get cam reddish that would be perfect there are reports that the knicks want a second round pick for cam reddish but we don't know if there are any other caveats right are there any other pieces to that you know does evan fournier have to be included 
in order to get him for a second. That is something we don't know. We don't know all the details. We just know uh, what kind of like little murmurs have been put out. Ideally, if you could get Cam Reddish and Boyan Bogdanovich, I think that that would be like the best case scenario out of all this. Like if you could get Boyan Bogdanovich for a first and then go get Cam Reddish for a second, then boom, right? That might be one of the best deals because now you get two sizable uh, wing players that can play both forward spots, but also uh, a guy in Cam Reddish who just, he just seems like he has the most potential and promise uh, and could really make an impact for the Lakers. And now you're getting here, uh, home run, like grand slam out of the park would be Boyan Bogdanovich, Sadiq Bey, and Cam Reddish, right? If you could work something like that out, or if you could get Cam Reddish and Boyan Bogdanovich for uh, a first, uh, an unprotected first, and then trade a second for Cam Reddish, then that would be beautiful, right? Like that would be, you can make an argument, would be best case scenario. Because uh, you get two young wing players, you get Boyan Bogdanovich. Because the, the, the issue with the youth, and my concern with the youth, is come playoff time, right? Having guys that you can count on that have the experience, that have been in the moments, that have hit the big shots. Uh, Boyan Bogdanovich is one of those players, so it'd be nice to get somebody like that. But what if the Lakers could just get Sadiq Bey and Cam Reddish, right? Like, what if they could get Sadiq Bey for, say, two seconds and Cam Reddish for a second, right? And you give up, you know, say, Damian Jones, JTA, and, um, you know, like, Troy Brown or something like that to get, like, Sadiq Bey, and then you trade Kendrick Nunn to go get uh, uh, Cam Reddish in a second, right? And now you got these two guys for basically three seconds because the Lakers have their 2023 second. They also have Chicago's 2023 second. And then they have like all their seconds for now into the end of time, essentially, at least at the moment. So you could take like Chicago's 2023 and then take like, you know, Lakers 2024 second, and then, or 2025 second or whatever, and trade those for Sadiq Bay, and then give the 2023 Lakers second uh, for Cam Reddish, uh, and then maybe like a 26 or something, whatever, whatever you got to do to go get these two guys. In this case, you would have two very young, very sizable wing three and D guys that could play both forward spots. Like you could literally start both of these guys. You could have like LeBron run point, Walker at the two, which he is more of a two than a three, uh, then have like, uh, you know, uh, Sadiq Bay and uh, and Cam Reddish run in the two forward spots with Anthony Davis, right? Like, so now you got youth, you got athleticism, you got size, you got defense, you got switchability. I mean, you got everything you could want uh, for this Lakers team. And this would be great for teams like, you know, like the Clippers or, you know, Boston, guys that have multiple sizable wing players that we need to be able to defend and guard. Now, like, that's the idea is to go get some wing depth, turn some of these guards into wing players, and you'd still have your first with Russell Westbrook, right? So you basically have these two guys, and then you could take your first with Russell Westbrook and maybe go make a move for a couple guys or keep Russ. Like, if these two guys really come in and, and they deliver, right? Like, let's say, I mean, these two, again, they cannot be worse than Patrick Beverly and Kendrick Nunn, right? They can't. And can't be worse than JTA, can't be worse than Damian Jones because those two guys don't even play. And Troy Brown has been solid, but I'd rather have these two guys just because of the size and the youth and things like that. Not that Troy Brown's old, uh, you know, he's the same age as these guys, but these guys are bigger uh, and a little more proven. So I would rather go this route. You're basically unloading all the scraps to get two young guys. And I know some people are going to watch this and go, well, there's no way, blah, blah, blah. Look, the offer is the offer. You know, I mean, teams have put out, if it's true, assuming the reports are true, if all they want is a second, then that's what it is. They're not, they don't care about the players or the salary. They care about the asset and unloading these guys. And all those guys are expiring. So what do they want? They want the, they don't want to take on long term. Like if you're the Knicks, you don't want to take on long term multi year salary just to get a second round pick to unload Cam Reddish. No, you want to free up the cap space. So you free up the cap space, you get a free second. Cam Reddish goes to Lakers. Sadiq Bey, he's the odd man out. He's coming off the bench now. Uh, he's, his minutes are sp uh, sporadic and not, and kind of all over the place. What ends up happening? They end up getting some expiring deals so that way they don't have to take on long term salary. They get a they get you know two second round picks and everything's right in the world, right? That's why teams are willing to do this. Now, will it happen? Who knows? You know, but it's not out of like these guys aren't fielding, you know, the a lottery pick. Like these guys, it's not especially Cam Reddish. Like Cam Reddish, I would be shocked if he went for more than like 
a, a second or two. Like, I would be shocked if somebody gave up a first-round pick for Cam Reddish. Um, Sadiq Bey, same thing. Like, I don't see you getting a first-round pick unless it's, like, the Bucks and it's the 30th pick, you know, something like that, right? So, and at that point, you'd also have to take on long-term salary. And, look, Detroit's got plenty of salary space. I get that. But that doesn't mean they're just going to use it willy-nilly and just take on long-term salary to do that, right? The idea is, like, you go get Victor Wimbanyama, you have $70 million in cap space, and now you're going and you got Boyan, you got uh, Cade Cunningham, you got, you know, uh, Durin, you got, you know, uh, uh, Wimbanyama, and now you're using all your salary space to go sign two or three, uh, you know, mid-tier or star level players and now you're a contender like right off the bat that's what Detroit's hoping to do that's why Detroit wants to keep Boyan Bogdanovich because they still have even with Boyan have like 50 million dollars in cash space next season and if they can move off of Sadiq Bay, that frees up a little more so they'll have like 55 million that's enough to go get you like you know two stars or close to star type players to put around you know a Victor Wembanyama, Cade Cunningham and Boyan Bogdanovich Right. And now you're off to the races. Now you have like a legit team that maybe can be a contender, depending on how good Victor Wimiyama is out the gate. And, you know, Cade Cunningham, he's shown a lot of promise and he could end up being something in this league. So I think it would make sense for all teams. And if you're the Lakers, this is this is a future move. It helps now, absolutely, but this is also a future move, and it gets you two guys that you could have for now and the future, right? Uh, along with Max Christie, hopefully Austin Reeves. Uh, you could probably sign Walker at this point. This doesn't really ruin your, your cap flexibility next season because uh, neither of these guys are going for max contracts anyway, and, and Sadiq Bey still got a little time. Uh, Cam Reddish, like he's probably not going for more than like $15 million a year. So you could re-sign him, re-sign Walker. So now you got you know Walker, Reddish, uh, Sadiq Bay, Austin Reeves, uh, you know Max Christie. You got all these guys that are basically twenty three and uh, and under for the next. You know that's your that's your pieces for the future. Then if you do go get a, a superstar or two after LeBron and Davis and stuff like that, well now you're off to the races. Or if any of these guys turn into something, then yeah, it's good. You're in a good spot. So anyway. As always, this is a discussion, so I want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Should the Lakers make this move? Do you think that this might be arguably one of the best moves, especially for the, the price that it would cost? You imagine you wouldn't have to trade any of your first. You'd have all your first-round picks, so you could still do a Russell Westbrook trade. Do you think, no, you got to go get somebody that's more impactful right now? However you feel, whatever your thoughts are, good, bad, ugly, somewhere in between, I'd love to hear them. Let me know down in the comments below.